next speaker will be Rob Probin. Probin, Bye. you you probably tell us how to now uh, <laughs> pronounce your last name properly. Force debugging in robotics, and that's great. Uh, uh, so if you want, to, you can share your screen and yeah, um, yeah, it's, the it's stage it. is yours. <clears throat> If I can get the presentation up. So that works. Oh, yeah, we see Mars. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I, I is, is this showing the presentation? Yes, it does. OK, so. Uh, I like lots of programming languages, right? Um, but, but I've written forth for uh, um, hobbyist game, games for scripting engines, uh, for production tests, uh, for, for various embedded systems. Uh, but, I, but I've been involved for well over a decade in, in uh, robotics, uh, specifically Micromouse. Now, uh, some of you will have heard about Micromouse already, right? We're going since the late 70s. Um, uh, for those in the UK, for instance, there was a Tomorrow's World in 1981 or 1982 about it with a ZX80, Sinclair ZX81. Um, uh, and, and hopefully, if I don't run over time, uh, I've got two halves. One is to give you an idea of what's happening on that sort of robotic side, uh, what, what people are actually doing today. And then the second one, second half is perhaps um, to just give you an idea about robotic debugging. And I, I think that Fourth is quite well suited to this this type of thing. It's not, it's not certainly not the only game in town, but there's some advantages. Um, and I think lots of other people have got things to learn from Fourth, even if they write in other languages. Uh, so let's start with the um, let's start with the with with the beginning of the presentation. So hopefully it's right. So let me talk about UK Mars for a start. So this is Micromass Robotics Society, which was formed a few years ago to keep uh, hobbyist robotics happening, things happening in the hobby, hobby robotics, and Micromouse, which is May solving robots. And make sure a competition events happen each year and encourage people to, um, to and, and help people provide resources for, for people to develop these things, right? Anybody can become a member. Um, most of the stuff, the competition we focus on are May solving robots, and I'll show you some photographs, line follower, drag race, um, we're not the only people either. I mean, the, the IEEE, the IET, uh, Pi Wars, some of our members are helping out with schools and universities. And these things happening right the way across the world. Uh, in the US, Portugal, um, uh, you know, India. And to do with things like micromaterials are standardized across the across the world. So unlike Pi World Wars that, that sort of redesign their competition, their rules every year, the rules are quite stable, which allows you to, you know, get, get into the what, what is usually a part-time hobby. Um, this is the, the UK Mars website. There's a bunch of information. There's a link to uh, some software as well. Uh, I think there's a big option for, in my opinion, there's a, there's a. So Rob, may I interrupt um, you just for a moment? Maybe you switch off your video to get more bandwidth because you're fading away. Um... Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me see. Just the switch off the camera. That would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Let me, let me come out to full screen. How do, I, how do I come out of full screen? Is it okay if I do it for you? Yeah, yeah, if, yeah feel free, please. Okay. Can you do it? So, say it again. Is that better? Much better. Right, okay. So, let, let me go on to this slide. So, this has got a few. This is, this is the maze solver stuff, micromouse. So, um, 
the, the traditional micro mouse that's been um, uh, happening for um, since the since the late late seventies early eighties is sixteen by sixteen, and these are uh, eighteen centimeter by eighteen centimeter cells. Um, and, and the robots are you can hold in your hand. Uh, a lot of people have these like the five by five maze on the top right. Uh, the competitions are happening every year. Obviously, last year was a bit of a bit of a bit of different. There were some virtual competitions that happened that various uh, various were organised. The one on the bottom bottom right is uh, in Birmingham City University in 2017. Um, there's generally even in the UK, I mean, quite a few countries host these. Uh, there's about two or three events at least, or three events hosted just by us uh, in the UK. Uh, let me let me go on to the next next slide. This is drag race. This is another competition, I guess. And, and this is quite popular with, with uh, schools. So uh, there's about a three meter track. You have to, you have to, there's some white markers right at the end. You have to stop before you run off the end, otherwise you get penalty points. And it's the, uh, because it's a very interactive, you've got two people racing against each other. The kids love it, right? Although we do have entries on the maze boards as well. Uh, so these maze, there's, these uh, wall followers that can follow left hand wall, and there's also full solvers. So we we get um, uh, kids entering that as well as as well as adults. Um, and, and several of the universities run projects as well on on these things as well. They run they run uh, uh, specific uh, course courses on on robots. Uh, this is the line follower contest. Uh, uh, the the bottom the one on the bottom right is uh, I think the old Japanese contest. They are rather mean to the robots, in my opinion. They put a lot of varying uh, curves. A lot of these robots, these line follower robots, will actually learn the course on the first uh, run round, um, and then will run the, the 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 course sort of flat out because they know where the corners are. Uh, and on the bottom left, you can see there's a there's a collection of these, and if you you can just search for for uh, you know, uh, um, uh, line follower competition or, or or some similar what's it called? And quite often there is a there's a whole array of these robots, especially uh, um, in, uh, in in Japan. There's a there's a huge number of entries. Uh, these are sort of uh, uh, maze type robots, um, uh, coupled with people's hands below. They, they come in all shapes and sizes. They've generally got smaller, right? Uh, over the years. The ones in the 70s, as you might imagine, were quite big, bulky things, maybe with Z80 processors in them. Um, the, these, these things are, are sort of um, are about maybe five inches by three inches type of thing. The one on the top right has got a, has got a, a fan to hold it down to the, to the, to the, to the maze board. Uh, this is quite common for the winners in the because they corner so fast now that you have to hold them down on the boards. Um, so these get, you know, three meters a second on a, on a competition. What, one of the top 10 robots is not particularly, uh, what's it called? The one on the, the, the top left, I'll talk about a bit more. That's a standardized design from UK Mars and you can download the, um, the Gerber files to make PCBs, you can download the schematics, these various pieces of software. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. There's also half size now. Uh, so this is this is nine centimeters by nine centimeters, the, the cells of the of the uh, of the of, of the maze. As you can tell from the top right, these things are quite small, right? A lot of them are using um, uh, the uh, motors used in quadcopters, very small motors used in quadcopters. They can go up to the mazes, still can be three meters by three meters, but you can fit 32 by 32 cells on those. Um, the one on the bottom left is quite interesting. It's a six wheel design with steering on four of the wheels. Uh, the one on the, the bottom right uh, is actually just a wall follower that was run uh, the year before last, when we last run uh, in in a face-to-face -face competition. This competition is in the UK. 
things to make things more difficult. I think there was there was reasons for that. I won't go into, into them now. Uh, so just what what languages are actually people using today, right? And these are, as far as I know, obviously you don't know what everybody's mouse is running. Obviously C and C++ appear there, but Forth does. There's quite a lot of Forthers in the community. Uh, there is a stamp basic one, although I must admit it's very slow, right? Um, there's still a few people hanging on to writing raw assembler, which, you know, I used to do, but I haven't got time for anymore. These bits of MicroPython, as, as somebody pointed out earlier, it, it generally is a bit slow for what we're doing here. Uh, there is people running C Python on Raspberry Pis, not very many, right, I must admit. So the advantage, um, uh, I'll go on to the, some of the advantages of, of fourth in a minute. So these are these are my robots, right? Uh, so left, the one on the left, uh, which is actually called Starfire, um, runs Flashforth, right? Um, that's it's actually I, I, I started using Flashforth a, a few months ago. Very very good. Very impressed. This is actually using a DS pick. Uh, DSPIC33F, I think it is. Um, there's two fourths for that particular micro, as far as I can tell. One is produced by uh, Dr. William Marshall, um, and the other one's Flashforth, which also runs on AVRs. Um, and it's very good. It solves the memory problems that the last speaker was talking about, right? I mean, it does things really well in terms of memory. And I have to point out that if you're using C, C suffers with memory problems with flash and RAM and stuff. I mean, I, as a day job, I fight with that stuff all the time. Um, the one in the back, or the one in the center, in fact, is the, is the standard UK Mars uh, robot, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Uh, the ones on the, the, the right are all vision robots. Um, the far right, top far right, is a, a stepper mouse. That's got stepper mouse motors as opposed, as, opposed to, uh, as opposed to DC motors. Um, it's got uh, both a microcontroller and a Raspberry Pi on with camera. The, the top one's an older one with a with a, with a camera with ARM sevens on with 60k, which um, was tricky to do vision on, but possible. And the bottom one is a line follow, actually made out of a Go Pi Go uh, kit. Um, this is the uh, uh, UK Mars Bot standard design. Uh, as I said, all the the uh, the hardware is open source, software is open source. I want to get forth as a standard option, right, for this. Um, um, so myself, I'm the Treasury UK Mars, the, the, the secretary as well, we've both been talking about it. It's just an amount of time. People have fitted other micros on. So a standard, you can fit an Arduino Nano. We've got one member who's fitted a Pico, a, a Raspberry Pi Pico. Somebody else has fitted an STM. Uh, Pete, Pete Harrison is one of the other designers, has fitted uh, uh, an Arduino 33 BLE or, and an Arduino Every. So it, it's a flexible platform anyway. Um, you can ask me about that later. So let me go on to the, the second set and then you can ask some questions maybe. So I want to talk about robot problems. I think that one of the things I'm very interested in is debugging, which always doesn't get enough study in my opinion, right? How you actually get things up and running. Um, if you go on a university course, as you all know, a lot of it is to do with design and, and um, analysis of the problem. But often your, your, your problems are the latter two, understanding old code or actually getting things working. Um, so as robots especially are problematic because it's tricky to get things running because they've got mechanics, they've got physics. You know, unless you've got a team of like with, um, you know, like a, a team of physicists and mathematicians, it's tricky to actually do it in theory. So you actually need to run it on real hardware and be interactively uh, changing things. Um, so especially with these robots, they move very, very fast. And hopefully if I get time, I'll show you a, a bit of a video. Look, you don't, even the maze solving, it's tricky, even if you wrote the code to know what it's thinking at a particular instance in time. Um, traditional debugging, you've all seen this before, we've got a lot of experienced people on the call. Looking at the code for certain types of class of problems helps, but with real time it's problematic because they're not logical problems often. 
single stepping is terrible for real time for, for things, anything that moves, right? Um, generally, I tell all of the engineers I work with, you know, single step your code, know what it does, right? In fourth, obviously, that's, you know, have high factorization and test each thing piecemeal. Um, unit tests and automated tests, you, you can do a certain amount with simulation, right? But it's extreme, it's uh, very limited. Actually, if the traditional debugging, printing out things is often the best thing. But let me talk about some other things quickly. Stepwise refinement, which is obviously, I guess, in the early 70s. Um, and I've got some quotes on here. Maybe I'll make this presentation available for everybody. And you can, you can read the quotes. One's actually somebody posted on Facebook recently about fourth, which I thought was very, very, um, uh, uh, Daryl Johnson, which uh, I thought was very, very uh, uh, related to my experience that, that fourth is very good at getting things up and running. Um, P fourth, which I quite like, is a C fourth done by Phil Berth at, uh, at 3DO to get hardware working, right, before everybody actually started working on what's it called, uh, the actual hardware. Um, and I see that happening a lot where get, getting fourth up and running. And for robots, you've got a lot of different pieces that you need to individually test on a real robot running real things. The second thing, which I'm not going to have time to talk about today, is, is custom debugging words, which doesn't happen in C. So if I'm working on a C project in my day job or a C++ project, I'll often generate a command line that you can enter small piece meal words that you can test with. You know, I follow a sort of fourth pattern. But it's tricky to justify writing specific words for that, that get thrown away. It's not like that with fourth. And I'd, li I'd like to, to, to talk about that at some point in the future, but I won't get a chance now. Another thing, just talking about robots generally, obviously get data off, log it. These two graphs, uh, the one on the right, a sense curve for infrared sensors. As you get close to the right, uh, on the on, uh, far left of that graph, obviously the IR sensor receiver pair is getting too close for the, for the reflection, but you can see the sort of, the sort of curve as it gets further away, the IR sensor. And a lot of these are IR sensors. Uh, ultrasonic's not fast enough. Time of flights tends to be tricky as well. So for wall sensing, a lot of the robots use uh, infrared. The graph on uh, a speed controller where it's accelerating up to a particular speed you've specified, then decelerating to do a turn. The gray is the is the forward velocity, the V term. And then uh, we've told it to, to, to finish at a particular speed. So it drops down to that speed. The yellow curve is the, is the, is the angular, the, the omega term, the angular velocity. Um, and this is off a real UK Mars bot. The data is generated by motor encoders. So that's why it's no, noisy, right? If you get the better, uh, motor, the better your, uh, encoder on your motor shaft, the less noise you get out, but it tracks it, as you can see. You can't actually see, there's actually four lines on this, um, but they track so well. Um, and I could talk about um, uh, that sort of stuff in another talk, perhaps. Um, people draw lines on their, on their maze boards to make sure it tracks, uh, or they can understand where, it, where it's going and where it's off. Um, videos, etc., help with that. Uh, even, even having it fit in a, a speaker or a buzzer on the board to get some audio feedback uh, is a good idea because you can often hear things better than you can see them ironically because these things move fast, so fast. The, the last thing then before uh, is, is perhaps to, to see if I can convince this to play some video. Uh, so this is, this is, which one do I want first? I want this one. Hopefully you can all see that. Now, playing video on uh playing video on if i can just find what i did with the video there it is playing video on a, a zoom call is always an extra is, is always an extra interesting exercise what i might do is upload these to if it doesn't play to i might upload them to youtube and send out links to the group anyway so this is the, the guy on the left that you can't see is the face is pete harrison he's won the competition several times so this isn't my mouse i wish it was um, so this is the mouse running, not full speed, he's doing an explore. 
So I don't know whether you, don't know whether you caught that. I don't know how many frames you actually played. Let, let me try playing it again. Yeah, like we, we, I see like uh, one frame every three seconds. Ah, okay. So the, the answer is it gets to the center of the maze in eight seconds. And it's not running. It's probably doing an explore of this because it runs faster than that. So for instance, you'll, you'll notice that it, it do, it's doing diagonals through the, through the maze. It's difficult to know what's going on. So in terms of debugging, smartphones are great because they've got slow motion. So you might actually be able to see this. I apologize for the flickering because, but this is the uh, fluorescent lights. So this is, so now you can see that it actually tracks the maze very, very well. I've also got a warning, my internet's unstable. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll upload these to YouTube so people can take a look at them offline. There are- uh, Rob, show us a robot uh, running on Python so we can uh, follow the image. It, it will run slower. This yeah, runs yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> so, so yes, I agree. So um, as you can see, I mean, other people have said that Fourth is good for robotics. I agree. A absolutely. Now, some of these robots are obviously written in C, but it, there's, a, there's a lot to be said when you're getting things working. There's a, there's a, although they're simple devices, you've got encoders, you may be of storing parameters in the EEPROM, you might have to do, um, you know, you've got IR sense calibration to do, you've got um, uh, a motor control to do, speed control, position control. You've got a lot of individual pieces to test. And as a, as a when, when you're developing a robot, it's, it's not clear how you get all these pieces working individually or working well. And you need to do that interactively. And fourth is good for that. So, any questions? Thank Maybe you I can risk very starting much. My, no, that's impressive. 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 Yeah. Amazing. Yeah.